What's going on, y'all? It's Greg. Greg said it. Back with Inspiration Motivation. I'm back in town. I rode all night. It's seen all day. Just getting back here. Made a couple stops. Had a little traffic. Back late to Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia area. And where do I even start? I did a lot of day. Kind of gave y'all a little synopsis of what I saw. Uh, on our early live, we did the early live nine. Next game is going to be the same thing. We're going to be out there in Boulder. So it's going to be the same situation. So make sure y'all, make sure y'all like, share, subscribe so y'all you can kind of be on in tune with that. Because it's definitely going to be like a nine o'clock thing again in a couple weeks. But as I said, it's interesting being in the environment. Not the biggest stadiums, decent crowd was there. It bounced a little bit in the beginning of the game. But outside of that, it was no room to bounce. That crowd was dead from the beginning and killed that crowd. I think they had a, a faulty expectation and, and they, they were set up to be in shock. It, they were in shock to see that Colorado one could run the ball. The defense was stout and they were like, oh, what do we got on seven two? It don't look like what we thought. The media sold them a lie. Yeah, it, it was, it was deception at best. And, <laughs> I, you know, anybody that right here, you know, I've told you, I've done enough conversation about that, not just in football, but in life in general, that, you know, you got to be careful who your sources are and the people and what they're telling you and what their motive is, because we know the motive with Coach Prime. We know the situation. They don't want him to win. They want to turn everybody against him, put that negative in the air and hope that it disrupt that team, hope that it disrupt their focus, their confidence. They're believing themselves. They're banking on you taking the bait. They bait on you to accept a lie as your truth. When you say God as a religious man, like Coach Prime, and if you are, and if you're not, that's for you to deal with. But for someone to say, hey, they were they were called to do such and such a thing, and it didn't quite you know, go that way that they thought it would go or that the journey is just different than what you plan. I mean, it's, it's a difficult situation and it takes faith. It definitely takes faith. And what we're looking at is Colorado is overcoming. They're overcoming that, that situation. They're, they're taking a journey where they are proving the doubters wrong and, and showing that indeed let the truth come to reality. They, they letting the truth come to the place where, you know, you said it. Now everybody got to see it. I'm not looking for your approval. And that's where we are. I mean, Colorado stepped down in Orlando. At the TV, I was watching the big news, but I also was watching the local news. And it's just like, they just really had this thing done. Like they thought it was Alabama or somebody. And it's like, they, these people really been selling Colorado. Everybody is a superhero when they play Colorado from week to week. And then when they lose, everybody just turn on these people. You know, Baylor, same situation. I think Baylor played BYU pretty strong. BYU still undefeated. BYU may be a team that keep going. It may be a situation where it's like, where these people come from? I think Iowa State doing all right, but I don't know. I don't know if they got the quarterback or whatever. I don't know. Right now, it's still early. But one thing for sure, they wrote off Colorado early. Colorado lost one game, one and one, and it's oh, it's over. They come, they lucky they win any more games. It's just you know you didn't do that to everybody else. You didn't get them a chance. I know Kansas State lost a game. They still rank, and they still got a chance. Nobody threw their season away, and it's like you know BYU stomped them, and they really almost lost the two lane. But it's like when you're looking for negativity, and you're looking for this narrative again, a coach prime, and everybody attached to coach prime has got it. Shadur has got it. He's put the top quarterback. They put him all the way down. You look at even Mata has caught it. Like, oh, he can't kick. It's like anybody connected to Coach Prime, not just his team, but him personally close to him. Travis Hunter even started it to catch it. You notice that, oh, they, as much as he do, they try to find something negative to say about him, about can he do it in the pros and how that turned into, you know, Richard Sherman had the situation, though. He talked to Prime and apologized. He was like, where does all this negativity come from? Travis Hunter's a bland receiver. They say he can't do it. He got to find some negative to say. Well, he can't do both sides. He don't have to. But if you do, he, he, he can do it. And it's like, it's a lot of negativity. And yet another guy, I think we got another flip. One of the safeties came over. They had a couple of them. Flip, and you ain't seen nothing yet. 
And as soon as these people come to Colorado, they lose their stars. And they ain't anybody who came to Colorado and then lose no stars. You know, the transfers, they, everybody turn on them when they come to Colorado. And we act like this normal and we act like this is, is okay. I had people say, yeah, it happened to other schools. You lie. This is very unique. This is, you know, yeah, some people may use stars, but it's not a consecutive pattern like this. Not an obvious pattern. Like, it only don't happen at certain schools. Like, okay, that, that may be the case that it don't happen with them. Maybe they got a little more clout. But it specifically happened to this program. Because they don't want this program to have any leverage to get these rankings that they would get with all these four and five stars. So I'm gonna drop you to three star. I'm gonna drop you to four star. Because now you gotta rank them. Colorado's in a situation now where, if you look at the rankings, all of a sudden they was at the bottom, no chance of winning. To now they rank second in the conference. However, that ranking and percentages go, because there's other teams that's undefeated in the conference, other teams that won loss too, and um, there's some teams with no loss. But I guess they haven't played as many games in the conference as Colorado has. Maybe they had an off week. I don't know. But Colorado right now is right behind BYU in ranking. It's unheard of. They started off the season like out of like, what is it, 15, 16 teams? They might have been number 11 or 12. And it's like they only had a few teams below them, like Cincinnati. I even think Texas Tech was above them. And... Yeah, I don't think they saw BYU coming. I don't think they all stayed. I know they was, I think it was even ranked higher. And no respect was given to Colorado. And yet, it's three teams that's behind Colorado that's currently ranked. Kansas State is behind them, currently ranked, because they've lost the conference game. Um, I believe maybe Iowa State is behind them as well, and Utah. And Utah's lost. And that's where everybody thought was going to win. They just lost. To Arizona, you, they still got to go and play BYU. They still got to play Colorado. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be the teams you thought, clearly, right? Especially if you keep going the way it's going. The only team that's ranked conference-wise above Colorado is BYU. Yet, all these teams I've named, except Colorado, is ranked in the country in the top 25. BYU is ranked in the top 25. Utah is ranked in the top 25. Our state is ranked in the top 25. And Kansas State is ranked in the top 25. And it's like the respect just not going to come. I didn't expect it. Some people thought they might get in there this week. I knew they were going to have to beat. They holding on to that last hope. That, oh, they lose to Kansas State. Oh, see, that's why we weren't going to rank it. Oh, yeah, they have to pull it back. They're going to pull it back. you know. But when they do beat Kansas State, it's going to shake it all up. It's going to be an earthquake. It's going to be like the political season. It's just going to be like, whoa. What happened? What's happening? Because they don't want to rank them, but they're going to have to. It's just what kind of credit they're going to give them. They're just going to give them a little 23 rank, 22 rank. Because they know the closer they get to that top 12 and they keep winning, they're going to get them an argument to get in the playoff. Now, of course, they're going to need to win the conference anyway, but I'm just saying they're not going to get them a rank. We watching teams lose games and play close games, and they still rank. And, and you know, it's like, oh, well, they were so low they had room to lose, or they lost to a good team. Yet, we're going to watch this thing play out. More and more teams are going to lose games, and you're not going to be able to play that thing. As long as Colorado keep winning, you're not going to be able to play that game with them, this whole they're not good enough game. And you can't say they ain't playing nobody because it's interesting that, yeah, Arizona lost their rank, Oklahoma State lost their rank, but now BYU don't replace them and Iowa State don't replace them. So you still got four teams ranked in the conference. Ain't that beautiful? Now, you don't play all of them. You're only going to play Utah, who's still holding on to theirs because they got beat by Arizona. And um, I don't think it was planning on that. But, again, they still got a little backup court, freshman quarterback in. I, I said, it's only a matter of time. And, and even with Ryzen, he, he got hurt. As soon as he got back out there, he still ain't played and and, and rusty and, and, and fragile, really. And he's not the same guy. So, you know, Utah might not be the team people going to be in shock. I don't think our state is going to hang on, but I believe BYU can. So Colorado's in a very good situation, 2-0. There's very few 2-0s. It's going to be even fewer 3-0. And, and the longer they maintain that, they're going to have head-to-head over teams they beat, as well as they're going to have being in position to continue to work towards that bowl game. Because he's got people already got two losses, like Oklahoma State. that They just knew that's going to be back this year, one of those teams. 
and Utah don't have much room to be already on their second loss while you're still undefeated. And you don't want to lose to certain teams they have head to head over. You definitely don't want to lose the teams that you should beat, like the Cincinnati's and the Texas Techs and all of that. But Colorado, once they get through Kansas State, the only people left is going to be Arizona, who's still scrabbling around, even though they got spanked by Kansas State. They're going to be still a threat. But you still going to have Kansas State, Oklahoma State, who who's really out of it. You don't want to take a loss because that's not a good loss. And they won't be a head-to-head because they already don't lost a couple games. If you lose three games, you can forget about being in the conference. Even I mean, Some people going to have one loss, two loss. But three, you pretty much going to be out. Just how the numbers are playing out right now. So many teams that haven't lost one yet. And everybody don't play each other. But a lot of them do. Like, we don't play BYU. We don't play Iowa State. And the way it's working out, that's working like, okay, it's not a split division. It's going to be record-based. But Iowa State play everybody else that we're playing. So it, it's really starting to work out because originally it was looking like everybody that Colorado played was going to be the teams that they was going to have to kind of go up against to be in that championship game when it's looking like the two teams is on the other side. That as far as schedule, you're not playing them. It just be nice because you ain't played them. You ain't going to have to play them twice. You'll play them in the championship. Colorado's in a good spot, better than what people thought. And the teams that there was supposed to be the rivals for getting into this this thing who came over them like Utah, Arizona, they already taking L's. Even Kansas State already taking the L. Go ahead and get them their second L, and you you really in the driver's seat. It's a beautiful thing when they say, "I know Bucky put it on this shirt." Respected will be, we say the disrespected will be respected, or shall be respected, and that's where we at. We're at the point now. The media, hee ha ha, taking Colorado lightly. And now they, their eyes are getting big, especially once this next game. And I told everybody, we're not going to see who Colorado really is until after this this UCF game, Kansas State. My receipts are on the internet. Everybody talking big talk. It's cute talking stats and football. But I, I like to look at this, analyzing the situation. And that's what I do with Greg said it. And I told everyone, this is where the game is going to be. It's, it's going to get real. When we, when we beat, I knew we were going to beat UCL. Did we dominate even more? That's gravy. And I said, when we beat Kansas State. But I said, we're not going to really see who Colorado really is on defense or offense. Things clicking. Don't even expect it. We're just going to have to grind our way through it. But the team going to start to jail around this point. And here we are. Colorado's a new team with a new coaching staff. They, they, everybody's getting used to coaching together, playing together. Don't get it twisted. This team has not peaked. You think that you're seeing something because this is the reality. It's way more talented than a lot of these teams. I mean, when you look at it, a lot of these teams are one-dimensional. They can really run the ball well. You shut they run down their offenses. Well. That's what happened to UCL. That's what a lot of these teams are like. That's what Oklahoma State issue is. Quarterback sub part don't really have a lot of receivers. I mean, the run game is strong. You also see that with, um, I think, Kansas State is like that. The quarterback's a little more dynamic. Maybe got a couple receivers, but that's about it. Colorado is one team that has kind of overlooked running game. Two were talking about last year, and it's still developing. Got a couple young guys. All of them guys come back next year in the backfield. You got Shador at quarterback, and you got so many weapons at receiver. Nobody has that in this conference, and we've been saying that from the beginning. So it's it's something really to be in awe about. It, it really gives you just that oomph. Like in life, you got to have that respect. You got to have that respect for yourself before you expect, you expect people to respect you. You got to put in that work behind the scenes. You got to put in that grind. And all that talk, you got to make it through all that. You got to step over that. And faith goes a long ways. We all got to have that. And if you're not motivated by Colorado, like I've been saying forever, what is it going to motivate you? People jealous, hating on Coach Prime, because this is what is really exposing. With all the odds against you, you still can win. Colorado's winning. And we ain't seen nothing yet. But I'm just Greg with Greg said it. Make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe. I told y'all this is going to be a season. Remember, a legendary journey. I'll talk to y'all soon.